been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Okay, so we're inside working. Heidi's doing some stuff and I'm producing a video and the wind has gotten extremely strong out here. So I'm coming out here to check the mast because we can hear our awning topper flapping. Oh, it's rock solid. It hasn't turned or anything. Well, this cable disaster is going to be changed. Um, I'm going to do some research to find out if I need to do a helix uh, of cable like this for interference reasons um, or if I, they can just go side by side and I'll I think I'm going to put them in some sort of a conduit that looks a little bit better than what this is currently because this looks really bad it looks well you see it I don't even know what you want to call that um, spaghetti <laughs> I like spaghetti so I don't think it looks like spaghetti but that's pretty rock solid and this guy here man job security he is weed eating every single lot the entire lot I, I'm sure they they have lawn mowers they have to but this guy has just been out here for hours uh, again job security I suppose uh, these guys checked out of here earlier I should say just left earlier and they came by and he did the string trimming on their property they I think they string trim these entire things instead of running them over with a mower and quite honestly I it don't need done this this if anything you could use some extra grass to help protect and hold the soil and not be so muddy I, I don't run the park I'm just I'm just saying so Heidi's in here doing some computer work her, her darn self keep it g-rated I'm going to go ahead and put one of these pairs of shoes over here. There we go. Like I said, we're going to find that this is a catch-all area. All of our shoes are kind of getting thrown over here. And there's supposed to be another chair over here. That's where I'm concerned. <laughs> It'd be nice if there was some sort of a, a seating bench here, huh? Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, videos producing over there. And Heidi is working on Amazon affiliates, so we're going to check out of here and uh, finish up our work and get ready for this live chat that's going to happen in three hours. You ready for that? Mm -hmm. That means, nope, she'll be yawning by 6.30. <laughs> Heidi's out here cooking bacon in her pajamas. Ain't that right, honey? She who paid attention. <laughs> she loves that little induction furnace. Correction. Induction stove. Induction cooktop. Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear you. I know. <laughs> so... Heidi, you can see we just got up. Um, slept really good, but it's only 56. Wow, this furnace is incredibly fast. It's 56. I literally came out here, turned off the fan that was just circulating air. It was showing 56 on the, well, the monitor there. Uh, I turned on the gas furnace. I picked up the camera, started filming, and it's already 60 in here. Well, that thing was quick. That is incredible. Anyways, um, I just got up. Uh, still have my clothes on from last night because I did. <laughs> we never really went anywhere, so I told Heidi. I said it's a little chilly tonight. I'm just going to leave my my shirt on. Of course, my pajama bottoms. But it's uh, it was a, a good night's sleep, even though it was cold in the room. You know, if you're staying under the blanket, it's not a big deal. Uh, we had the little furnace, the little Polonis furnace, plugged in um, to the outlet that's around the corner here and the refrigerator is running on the compressor obviously and uh, anyways Heidi's using that induction thing out there and it popped the breaker she came in and says oh I, I popped the breaker I don't know what to do <laughs> it's just like the house um, 
a learning thing. I mean, it's a learning thing. So let me let me tell you guys, uh, for people that don't know, um, I don't know how much light's going to be here, but we'll, we'll try to get you some light in here. In our case, it's here. Uh, two things you should be aware of. One, uh, if you're running your furnace, make sure you don't block, you know, put something directly in front of your intake, your air intake into the furnace. The other thing is uh, know where your, your breaker is, your panel is. I think most people know this, but if you have a, you know, a problem with anything, it's usually marked and these are the breakers to run the stuff inside the RV. So uh, in her case, she popped the breaker. I'm assuming it's probably the reefer one that she popped and uh, she had to reset it. If you have a 12 volt thing, for example, um, <clears throat> uh, this runs on 12 volts. Uh, the antenna on the roof, the power for the power antenna runs on 12 volt. All these lights in here run on 12 volt. Anything that runs on 12 volt. Um, the igniter for the gas on the refrigerator runs on 12 volt. The igniter uh, for the stove runs on 12 volt. I want to make sure it runs on 12 volt. It might be a battery. Nope, that's a battery. Okay, so ignore that. The igniter for the furnace, the hot water tank, I should say, um, that is 12 volt. The igniter for the furnace, that is 12 volt. Uh, numerous things. We're talking the water pump is 12 volt. There's a lot of 12 volt stuff. If you have anything that doesn't work on those, you need to check these fuses here. And there's quite a bit of stuff that's listed on here. Uh, the porch is probably the awning or the uh, light or both. Uh, the hitch, so that's for the power jack on the hitch. You can see there's quite a few things. Stereo, TV, all this stuff requires some sort of 12 volt power. And that's what all these fuses are for. All these fuses are for that. So, you may want to hold on or, or have extra fuses that are available. Then, of course, there's a couple of here that are listed at the top. That's probably for the Max Air fans. Uh, that's what I'm assuming because they are 30 amp. That's, that's pretty decent. So, just try to locate your panel. Everybody's panel is going to be in different places that you might have to flip one of those breakers um, if you put too much voltage to it, uh, an outlet or something. Because a lot of these outlets are on the same circuit. So, even though I just showed you a refrigerator breaker is probably the one she had to flip. Um, the plug that's outside is also connected to the plug that is outside and the plug that is inside this little furnace was running on to. What they do is when they run one of these electrical cords, and I know it's really dark in here, sorry about that, uh, for power, like in this case, there is a power cord going to the TV right there. It's a flat wire. You can see what it looks like there. It's not round. This wire here, if I wanted to add an outlet in this cabinet here, like maybe here in the corner, um, what they do is they make these things run through a box and then it just pinches and pierces this so that they don't have to cut it and wire it into a box. It, it just goes through it and on to the next one and that's what they do with all the outlets so like the wire that is going through this outlet right here is one wire it's not cut uh, like you would see in a house um, there's just one wire that goes let's say it enters from the top exits from the bottom and goes over to the hot water element um, and then it continues on and they just uh, terminate these things just terminate into the wire it, it basically clamps onto the wire and pierces it and allows you to mount your outlet and have electricity some of those can be troublesome but I don't see it normally it's not a big it, it's not a big deal but yeah new day uh, it's kind of nice I have some videos that I have to edit but it's a uh, far cry better than what it was we're already up to 62 all right I'm starting to get warm that means I'm starting to thaw out. It means I need to go use the restroom. <laughs> well, we're at Aldi's, and it's a new day. And 
We let you down, I think. So why did we let you down? Well, we didn't capture anything from yesterday at all, really, to speak of. And the reason that we didn't was uh, I went over to see my father, who uh, has got some congestive heart failure going on. He had a defibrillator just installed. So it was basically just a uh, visit. We haven't seen them for... Wow. I haven't seen them for a long time. I'm thinking it's like since Christmas, maybe. Wow. It's been a long time. It's been a very long time. So uh, part of the problem was the, the, the COVID thing. So I think it was Christmas. Let me stop that beeping for you. Visitation with them, you know, they're elderly. I didn't want to get them sick or anything. So nobody had visited for a while. And then slowly we've had, you know, visitors started going over. And then my dad's health issues, of course. So we kind of, uh, I, I think, let you guys down, unfortunately. Now, other than that, we really did nothing uh, at the RV, at the, at the campground, nothing at all. Um, we did go to Hartville Hardware to purchase some hardware uh, for the hold down. Sorry about that. Again, uh, for the hold down of the um, auto former because the auto former sitting in the back very well. It's doing a good job. However, it's uh, it, it did move a little during our drive, and that was a short drive, so. We wanted to make sure that got held down. So I bought a strap and a couple of hold downs. I still need to do the hole saw and put in my cable port uh, in the RV for the cable so I can mount the router and I can get that area looking a little bit nicer. Um, as you guys may have seen, if you guys watched our live, you know, our long live chat, uh, the, um, the, the internet was good. Uh, and that was through T-Mobile through our phone. Uh, not through the high speed that we, you know, purchased from AT&T, that unlimited. Uh, we wanted to use our phone. And the reason is, is because if I'm streaming from my phone, that there is no, that's, uh, that is truly unlimited. That's, there's no, it's not really data being used. Um, I mean, it is data being used, but it's not like hotspot data or anything like that. And, and they don't mess around. They, they really don't cap that, uh, for us that that's a good thing uh, we did have a drop off on the on the live chat at one point but i i don't even know what that was that was kind of a weird thing um and it's funny because a lot of people were experiencing during the live chat uh no sound all of a sudden their their roku or whatever no sound and and some people saw it some people didn't after the live chat we decided to watch a movie and my roku had no sound uh for youtube which was crazy I had to reboot my Roku and all of a sudden the sound came on. So I don't know if Roku was having a problem <laughs> or something with YouTube or I don't know what, but that was really weird that that happened. Um, and they're working off different operating systems than, you know, we were broadcasting off of T-Mobile and our cell phones and our internet uh, was being done through AT&T and our Roku internet's through AT&T. So today what's going on well Heidi's doing a uh, an instapot chili cook-off competition thing at the uh, campgrounds we're gonna see how that works out for her. Um, she does a really good job with her instapot uh, and makes some very good chili that that's a that's a really nice little device um, there's a lot of, uh, I'm going to retract what I said a little bit um, the Jellystone campground uh, that we're at I understand why they charge so much now. I have never been at a campground that had, in this kind of weather and at this time of year and stuff, so many activities. They they have activities overlapping each other starting today and, and going through Sunday. And I'm talking about activities for kids and adults, mainly kids though. But they have like magic pumpkin seed decorating and then magic pumpkin seed planting and then and this is all go and then the next day you go harvest the magic seed that you planted and there's uh coupons to go to a pumpkin farm that's real close and i mean there's a lot of stuff it's pretty amazing so anyways dealing with aldi's here heidi's picking up some of the essentials that we needed um unfortunately the whole electric bike thing that we had um the shipping label was created and it showed that it was going to be delivered today 
Um, it's not but the bike racks are going to be delivered today as far as the mounting racks that mount on the front of the bike. And um, we're just going to have those delivered to Dollar General. I don't know if you guys know that FedEx will deliver to like Walgreens and Dollar General and places like that. And you can just get, you can just have, you know, pick it up late, within seven days. So that's what we're doing. We're having those delivered there. And we may even do that with the bike potentially. So we don't have to be at the home for a signature. Um, yeah, uh, we'll have to see how that works out, but it's uh, it's an it's a feature and it's an option that you may want to try out. I mean, if you're at a campground, like uh, there was somebody that had got kicked out of a campground because they had a delivery come to their campground. If it's a FedEx delivery, um, you can deliver to Walgreens, uh, I think to Rite Aid maybe, but definitely Walgreens and Dollar Generals, a lot of Dollar Generals, and they will hold it there at that local Dollar General closest to your address um, for you to pick up within seven days. They'll actually call you and let you know when it comes in. So that's an option you guys may want to look into. All right. So we'll let Heidi do the shopping and uh, I think we may go grab some quick breakfast because we have some breakfast back at the, the RV, but I told her since we were out, she could save that for the next day. <laughs> Hello, today's Friday and we don't have much to do today except uh, tomorrow I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and make chili for the chili cook-off at the campground here um, I think it's cool to get involved in stuff like that but I'm a little introvert so you would say or so people would say or so Michael says or whatever but anyway, um, so I started, I have it all mixed up and I'll put it in my Instapot tomorrow and we'll show you the outcome. Never know, I might be the loser or the winner. Um, anyway, today it looks like the campers are starting to pull in. Um, like I think Michael said earlier that they do drive you to your site and um, there's probably at least since yesterday there's probably about six or seven more campers but they're supposed to be very busy this weekend so, here comes uh, a board. Show you here. But anyway, um, Michael's in doing videos or editing, and I was trying to work on the website but I have no freaking clue what I'm doing so I was looking stuff up on the internet to maybe help me um, I guess I'm gonna have to take a class because HostGator slash WordPress like I said I don't know anything about websites so it's all new to me I mean I can type a blog in but I really want to know how to do the whole website myself so I can change things and update things and um, do other things other than just the blog on the website so um, aside of having to pay somebody to do it I should be able to do it figure it out myself but I can't even figure out how to upload a freaking picture so I'm not real technical savvy and Michael he gets a little frustrated with me but you know I sold car parts on a mainframe or whatever you call that I sold auto parts for 23 years on uh, just a corporate computer that you, I mean, you could go on the internet, but you uh, pretty much did the same thing every day. You're make model and you looked up your parts. Um, you didn't have to try to make something work because it was already done for you. So now 
since it's all new to me I'm trying to figure it out and I mean like I said I can post a blog but I need to know the ins and outs of this website like I said I can't even upload a freaking picture and then when I put pictures on here I don't know how to get them to the computer and then Michael gets frustrated with me again so I gotta try to figure out all this stuff myself so that's what I'm gonna do today besides uh, I think we're gonna probably take a walk around here and uh, maybe across the street and walk around the park so anyway so that's what's going on right now nothing exciting but it's kind of relaxing here all right guys so I'm sitting here enjoying an adult beverage so that makes my lips a little bit more loose than they'd normally be and I'm gonna tell you that even though we prefer campgrounds this would not be our campground of preference uh, if it wasn't for the fact we'd never been here and we wanted to see what it was like plus we got to visit my uh, dad and stepmom which was really nice I'm gonna tell you two things because there's stuff that's happening here that's reminding me of uh, why I don't care for the campgrounds if you're going to buy a $65,000 rig you can afford a $20 set of radios look the links in the description so you're not yelling for the entire campground to hear that you're telling your wife okay turn the wheel back up you're good turn around here nope stop we don't need to hear all that the whole campground don't need to hear that that's the first thing the second thing is five miles per hour means five miles per hour I don't know why that's such a hard concept to grasp and when you're camping why are you in such a hurry right I don't get that right it's supposed to be relaxing and so that's number two and the same person that I'm referring to is the five mile per hour breaker I mean literally we're doing we were actually doing six miles an hour for a brief second down the hill and then I did five miles per hour and that person caught up to me and decided I was going too slow so they cut through the campground trying to get back to their campsite faster even though they were going the wrong way in the, the road direction you know all these roads have kind of a direction so people can park their RVs okay so here comes the third thing from that same person that I was just talking about that's the five mile per hour breaker you don't park your rig on the frickin road especially when the camping spot directly across from you is empty because the chances of somebody coming in and needing to back in their rig is pretty good if it's empty so they're going to need that space to get their rig backed in so here's the fourth thing from that same person when the park crew has to knock on your door and ask you to move your truck you don't ask like you don't act like you're Karen and that you're all upset and you fired it up and you back not not you Karen and Greg <laughs> I'm saying Karen the Karen because that's the word of the year yes yeah, the word of the year it'll go away don't worry about it Karen it'll go away and you won't have to hear about it anymore it'll be Margaret next yeah, year. yeah it'll be Margaret next year or or Viola or something <laughs> as long as it's not a Heidi <laughs> but the whole idea is he gets in his truck, he fires it up, he floors it, backs it around, turns it, and pulls it like another foot in his spot where it should have been in the first place. So, that's my rant. I'm going to finish my drink. If I drink enough, maybe I won't care. Okay, so here's something that's funny, I guess. When we got here, I have no idea what we were thinking, but when we got here... Um, we flushed our black tank really well because we had been in our site there at the house for over a week for right and we flushed it a little bit but the thing is is it's all going in our septic system so we're not gonna 
run 30 gallons of water, extra water just to flush our black tank. So we did that here. Somebody, I'm not mentioning names, who left the black <laughs> tank valve open for the last three days. <laughs> did it, yeah. So now I'm sure we have the infamous poop pyramid <laughs> in our black tank because all the extra water that we've been running like we always do um, is gone. Is gone. And it didn't get to help dissolve the toilet paper and everything. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, whenever you're camping and you do have a full hookup, if you don't know this already, uh, it's a really good idea to put extra water in your tank. You want the liquid to solid ratio to be way towards the liquid. You want all that liquid in there. Who cares if you have a full hookup, if you have to pull the valve an extra Multiple couple of times. times because you've now got to the full level. The whole idea is you want to be able to keep all those solids suspended and dissolving and everything that they need to be uh, to get that tank to stay clean. Well, somebody, and again, I'm not mentioning who, didn't do that. I went over there to dump the black valve today because I figured, well, it's been three days. It's probably a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. to go ahead and empty it because we can we don't need to but we can and uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was open already. Okay, so maybe I'm not done talking about stuff What a surprise I'm sure you guys are loving it Heidi don't like it so much. She laughs about it, but <laughs> all right, so here's the deal. I Like the campground overall. I, I think it's nice because of its location uh, for the Football Hall of Fame, going to explore Canton, explore Hartville, even explore Akron. I, I think it's in a good location. I think there's a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of kids here. There's a lot of kids activities. This is a Jellystone campground, so you know it's kind of a franchise thing. I couldn't believe. Mm, wow. Okay. Let's give them another Slurpee. So... One thing that I hate, though, is whenever people or companies in this case, like this corporation that runs these parks, kind of gouge the urban or city dweller that is trying to get out and enjoy themselves for the weekend with their kids. And that's what I picture this park as. This isn't one of those parks that you'll see a lot of people that might drive a thousand miles just to hang out and enjoy nature. This is the kind of park that is basically in business to help the people from Canton and Akron get away for it, you know, just get away from the city, get out and get to, you know, enjoy themselves. The whole time that I've been talking to you, the camera has been basically pointed in one direction. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I don't think this is going to make much difference because it's an action cam. This is all digital zoom. I've said that before. However, do you see those bundles that are sitting by that tree that are on top of the other bundles for firewood? You are not permitted under any circumstances to bring outside firewood into this campground. Those two bundles signify what is sold at this campground for you to consume in their fire rings. Those two bundles, just those two bundles we're looking at right now, that's $13 worth of wood. 13, that's right, $7 short of $20. So one more of those bundles and you're close to $20. It's six seventy-five a bundle. Come on, man. That That's wrong. I mean, you're literally burning money at that point. I'm wondering if I could get as much excitement and enjoyment out of burning 13 single dollar bills in a fire as I would that wood. Would that wood chuck wood wood chuck. <laughs> the other thing is, is if for whatever reason I went over there and grabbed that guy's fire ring and decide to move it, which I'm not going to, but if I did. There is a $20 or $25 charge for relocating the fire ring from where it's supposed to be at. That is crazy. I understand that it should be a penalty for moving a fire ring, but 
the firewood issue is just a little bit out of control. Now with that said, if Heidi and I want a fire, guess what we have to do? Heidi's got to come off her wallet and go buy some firewood. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we may, we actually may still have a fire, believe it or not. We'll probably do that tomorrow. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. We'll be out here. And this looks like a better spot to do the trick-or-treating. Right, trick-or-treating is coming up. Okay, that's it, guys. Okay, so it's obviously cold. See. Yeah, Heidi's yeah. going to check out the temperature. Yeah. I think it's in the lower 50s right now, but it's going to get into 51. the... 51. 51. It's going to be into the 41. Up, upper 30s. Even though it says 41, it's going to be upper 30s tonight. Uh, but we just had a visit with Gail and Chris Bolliard. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, glad you stopped by. And we uh, have this very inexpensive firewood that we purchased. <laughs> And <laughs> we're having a fire because it's cold out and we're trying to stay warm. We want to enjoy ourselves. So uh, that's what we're doing. We're just kind of hanging out here. You see, I'm in the RV um, and this place filled up fast. I mean, literally, you guys may have paid attention to the earlier part of the video. There was maybe three to four RVs in this entire loop. Multiply that times... Five? Ten? There's got to yeah. be 30, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's... Oh, there's, there's more than 30. Oh, there's... Okay, so... There's maybe 60. Yeah, there's a lot of RVs here. So I'll give you a once around here real quick, which I don't think I'll see much because not everybody's got their yeah. lights on Yeah. that much, but yeah, it's... There's... All only, the cabins are full. Yeah, they said there was only one site that was empty. Right, which is probably and across the street. It's, now it's this site because they put them on another site. Yeah, there was a lady in a fifth wheel that was here. Fifth wheel. Or, I'm sorry, a uh, motorhome. And she couldn't even make that turn, which I don't understand that. But all the fires are going on. And, again, I know you guys can't really see this because, well, it's night. But definitely uh, a cool, cool, cool night. And funny part is, this motorhome that's right next to us, it's called a Viper motorhome. It's a Ford chassis, was making the most weird noise. And from what I can gather, and what Heidi can gather, is it was the furnace maybe. But it was this low drone noise that sounded like, it sounded like a, a movie theater like, if you guys used to go to the movie theater and, like, the, you were wondering, wonder what the theater next to us is playing. Because maybe your movie theater was just a, a rom-con and there was just, like, dialogue and stuff. And next to you were some sort of a uh, action theater. It just, it, it just kept on going and just going... <laughs> Uh, 15 minutes straight. And it's doing it again, though, but it sounds no. like it's coming from somewhere else. No, it, yeah, it's coming from somewhere else. But anyways, yeah. And you know what's funny? It is. It's a furnace thing because it's this guy right across the street from us. His is making that same noise. Here, let me see if I can go over there and let you hear. It is the furnace. That is the craziest thing. This is a, a Ford F550 chassis, and it's making the exact same noise as that Ford chassis was when the furnace was running. That is crazy. Hide. It's the furnace. His furnace is over there running. Same thing. I thought that's where it was coming from. The well, no, said no. no, this guy this makes the same thing. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Okay, I'm going to have to step up our game. We're going to have to get a furnace that makes that kind of noise. We already had one. Not that loud. 
Well, we Ours? don't know. We never stepped outside. Oh, yes, we have. It does not make that noise. No, I'm talking about when the fan was. No, I'm talking about that cage. furnace. The furnace. You're that correct. furnace. So, anyways. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Maybe it's because they have a higher BTU furnace, maybe. So, this is the fire. That's our firewood. And uh, as far as uh, how expensive this is, I think I'd had more fun burning single dollar bills. Even though the firewood is exceptional. Don't get me wrong. It is some kind of a kiln dried hardwood or something. Here, it stopped. Good morning, YouTube, and look at the cleaner. <laughs> I was cleaning the shower. We found out that there was kind of a uh, an area that wasn't getting cleaned whenever we were squeegeeing it and wiping it down occasionally. So how little tracks that? Yeah, the tracks that these doors ride on. If you guys haven't looked at them, you definitely want to look at them. That's for sure. So um, we have a deep clean going on in there. So, what was happening today? Oh, I think I'm zoomed in. Let me zoom you guys out because this looks zoomed in to me. Oh, yeah. I was just zoomed in on you, honey. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, so, why, what, how, what's going on? <laughs> well, it's the next morning. We had that nice fire. We posted, I think we posted a picture on Facebook, right? Uh -huh. Maybe Instagram, too. So, again, if you guys don't follow us there, go check that out. If you can, follow us. That'll make it a little bit easier. Sometimes we got little stuff that we'll throw in there that's in between our YouTube videos. Uh, sometimes the YouTube videos, as you're probably telling now, might be a, a little bit slower to go up. And the campground is definitely full. Now, something that we already knew, but is uh, we're being reminded of in a huge amounts of uh, reminders. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It's being piled on little reminders here and there. And that is, uh, we love camping at campgrounds personally, but we know that whenever there's holidays or events or it's the weekends, that you get all kinds coming in here. And you get these RVers, campers, weekend warriors, that they have their own idea of what should be allowed and what they should be able to do at a campground. Unfortunately, that's usually not the proper etiquette for most of us. We we know, you know, we pretty much want everybody's experience around us to be just as enjoyable. We don't want to encroach on them. Uh, it, it's just one of those things. However, again, being in a campground has these disadvantages. So when we got our Thousand Trails membership, we knew that there was going to be disadvantages like this. We That we would run into situations that uh, we would be hating the fact that we're in a campground. So what would those situations be? And some of them are very innocent. Some of them are just, it just annoys us. Kids. Heidi says kids. Um, it's not so much the kids, it's the parents not teaching the kids. It's not okay to run through campsites. They scare me. Yeah, the, these kids... They get hurt and I'm not their babysitter. These kids are running through the campsites to the point where they have to jump over people's stuff because the campsite's not opened. I mean, you, you see how close we are. It's basically a little bit of grass and then a camper in a driveway, then a little bit of grass, then a camper in a driveway. So all of our stuff, once it's out, I mean, it's there's a good chance that it's blocking that little bit of grass. Yet, these kids are flying through here. So that's, that's one of the things. The other thing is, is all the parks have different rules, different regulations, and nobody reads them. For the most part, nobody reads them. Uh, there's a dog, it's a friendly dog, but that dog is supposed to be on a six foot, no more than a six foot leash at all times and under the direct control of their owner at all times. Let me tell you right now, these people don't even know where their dog is. 
that there's not a leash. There's not a there's not even a tie out. They don't even have a rope or anything out there. And since they've got here, this dog's just wandered the entire park the entire time. Crapping where it wants to, going where it wants to. Doesn't make a difference. So all this that I'm getting worked up about so early in the morning. Uh, just wanted to let you know that we know this is part of the campground experience on the weekends. We know that every weekend at almost every campground across the country, whenever all the weekend campers, all the weekend warriors come out, there's going to always be a group or a couple of groups that do this kind of stuff. Even with that, we're willing to accept it. The video that I'm putting right here, this talk that we're doing, um, it's me venting about it to some extent. It's not going to make a difference because I know most of our viewers, if not all of our viewers, you guys know. You, you guys know. It, you know what to do. We, we want to make sure that we don't stomp on other people's feet about the situation. So, um, it, it's again, this is just venting. It's just the sounding board. So, this is what I'd like you guys to do. Um, not that we're going to be able to respond, but... I want you guys in the comments to put down some of your horror stories about weekend campers um, that you've run into, or just campers in general, uh, that you've been out, you've been at a campground, you've been at a site, and how horrible these people have been. Okay, so Heidi's got me out here in the uh, snow. It is so freaking cold out here. It's, um, I, I found my limit. <laughs> And my limit is when it's 58 degrees Breezy. and there's a five mile per hour north wind um it's too cold it, it is way too cold for me so i put on a sweatshirt uh other than that the day looks real nice i mean if there if the sun would be out just a little bit more it probably wouldn't be so bad secondly if we weren't underneath an awning and maybe if we had the table over that way a little bit maybe we'll do that try to get in some sun actually maybe we'll get our chairs <laughs> and put them out in the sun so I bet you I could get warm that way okay so we have our little fire going again and yet Heidi's got her trick-or-treater going over here and there is a crap load of kids that have come out by already and we still have like 20 minutes left so I'm not really sure how that's gonna work out <laughs> um, something else we did yeah, the chili cook-off's kind of a bust. There was only two entrants. <laughs> um, this is something we've only used a couple of times. This is the grill that comes with the uh, RV. We usually use our Weber Q grill. But it is a horrible design because of the black tank flush. I'm still, that's the, that's the dumbest thing ever. It's not getting hot, but it's just dumb that it's right there. Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to the disaster that is being at a campground with the weekend warriors. These are the people that show up and enjoy themselves. Their kids tear up everything. They run around like heathens, and they do pretty much anything they want because they don't know how to read, and they don't care about the rules even if they could read. So... Why am I being so blatant about this at this point in time? Because the dog that has been running loose the entire time, and I have no problem with the dog, it's always the owner's, the dog, as the owner was over at that white motorhome, that 90's model white motorhome, as he was over there at that trunk putting stuff away, the dog was looking back and looking back and slowly coming over here and we're stomping our feet and yelling and beating on the sides of the the uh, walls and everything in our slide here because we could see what the dog was doing or what the dog wanted to do and the dog started squatting and took a dump right there there's the dog over there he's still running around it, he's still running around the dog just doesn't it hasn't been tied up at, at all why why wouldn't he run around? As the dog is doing its business, the guy that's at that white motorhome 
stands up, turns around, sees that his dog's crapping over here, and is like, uh, hell no, I'm not going over there and cleaning up dog poop. I got enough work to do. We need to get out of here. It's going to get ready to rain. What a disaster. And again, this is purely venting and a rant because we know that 90% of the people that we deal with are not like these jokers. But everybody that's watching realize these jokers are out there. They, they don't have any clue that there's rules in place for good reason. Now, the other thing that I'm really curious about, which I don't think you guys are going to be able to see, is one of those big fire ring things. You can see that fire ring, and it's filled to the rim with hot coals. Uh, how do you get rid of that? We'll come back or update you on that. Okay, guys, we're back because you've got to see this live action. They've got ratchet strap hooks and straps that they're trying to hook the bottom of this fire ring and all pick up equally and carry it over so they can dump it. Now, if you guys remember, we have a Jumbo Joe grill. We love cooking on charcoal. This was the reason because we had a hard time disposing of our charcoal after the fact. It's amazing. Look at this. Looks like they're doing okay, but that's 20 pounds of uh 20 pounds of ash in a 5 pound ring. That didn't work. Yep. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, just hose everything down, you know, make a disaster uh, out of everything. You know, that's what maintenance guys like whenever they come around to shovel the coals and put it away. They Instead of shoveling uh, dry coals that, you know, they sure could have got rained on a little bit, uh, they're going to be shoveling uh, all those coals. Yeah, mm -hmm. nobody believes you had a fire in the ring full Go ahead and wash it all off into the campsite. Because nothing pleases me more that when I get to my campsite and I park my rig, they have to drive through ash, mud. Might have to kneel down in that. My freshwater hose, my electrical cord, my stinky slinky, my knee, my sewer support, all that has to run through that muddy ash mess. That you created because you want your circle jerk uh, circle fire ring to uh, be clean for the next time that you go camping just to give you an idea they are spraying this thing down with so much water to rinse it out that the guy brought his chair over so he could sit down and do it there's just this pile of smegla that is being generated right in a camping spot because weekend warrior I have to check my time stamps but five minutes later still going and if you see this circus rolling down the road don't get behind them the tie down situation that's going on over there is hilarious all the movement everything he just threw the stuff up there he just threw it up there and then he just kind of wiggles it and that's pretty much it <laughs> he's got some straps on there but oh my just stay far away from anything in northeast ohio that looks like that says pursuit on the back of it because there's a good chance parts are flying off
And in the meantime, back at the other campsite. <laughs> it's just the circus, guys. Oh, man. And now they're deciding what to do with the pile. The mud mess that's left behind. What do you think they'll do? You think they'll do anything? Well, they're going to add to it, it looks like, a little bit. And fair warning, if you see that Fleetwood going down the road with the big gash taken out of it, don't travel behind it either because they just threw that ring up there and I'm sure they'll they'll tie it down with all of two bungee cords and just like the other trailer or motorhome. Yeah. All right, so to finish off the circus leaving town, uh, let's go ahead and leave it with the last remnants of what's going on that fire ring over there that one right there it's got trash in it why wouldn't it apparently they uh, decided not to bring that pumpkin and even though trash runs daily here at 10 a.m. they decided to pile all their trash up all the campsites including that hideout that's leaving now uh, they decided to pile it all over there by the uh, corner of that lot. Even though the dumpster to take their trash is literally right there. You can see it. Blue and big. It's amazing to me what a disaster this next person has to deal with. Because I guarantee they didn't clean up the dog poop over there either. So, sites 72 and 71 and 70. Stay away from that group whenever they're camping. And don't you definitely don't want to be behind them. I mean, it's a rant, guys. It's a rant, but this stuff is happening. This stuff goes on and... Does it bother me? Not, not Actually, not really, because it's not affecting me. Other than I might step in that dog poop out there. Um, if I didn't see it. If I hadn't been editing video here, I might have seen it. Uh, or not seen it and, and stepped in it. But honestly, the uh, the whole thing is, is I feel bad for the next people that come in. I feel bad for the maintenance workers. But here's the thing. If they had a problem with it, they need to have people patrolling at any time for two days. I'm talking about any time. If they would have drove past, they would have seen that dog running loose, except for about a 10 minute at the most uh, section of time. So that's their problem. They didn't patrol. 